Oh, yeah. Coffee on a Tuesday in Blog 15. Hello to everybody who is new. Speaking for the Hard Fought 100 who were here before and myself, Welcome. Your generosity during the Project for Awesome expanded my conception of what could be done in this community. And though it's not enough, clearly, I can only say thank you. Oh, and uh, there's this. Okay, so now that that's done, I think the president wanted to say something. My fellow Americans. Major combat operations in Iraq. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. Not that president. So as your commander-in-chief, and on behalf of a grateful nation, I'm proud to finally say these two words, and I know your families agree. Welcome home. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the war in Iraq is over December 15th, 2011. Eight years and 270 days later. By as early as 2004, I think the war seemed about as smart to most as deliberately putting your hand on a sizzling pan. But we have to be careful about simplifying a complex decade because it will be left to us nine years later to appraise this war, to tell its story in a way which is loyal to the truth but also answerable to the 4,487 troops who gave their lives to it and the many more thousands who gave their arms or their legs or their ability to use either. But today I'm not going to talk about the war proper. What I want to talk about is what happens when you burn your fingers on a sizzling pan. If it's happened to you, then you know that if it's a good, solid burn, then some of your skin is going to stay on that pan. And as troops leave Iraq, there's a bit of our collective skin which will stay in that country for some time. There are roughly 16,000 Americans still in Iraq to aid with the ongoing diplomatic effort there. An effort which is primarily aimed at making sure we secure an alliance with the young democratic government we worked so hard and spent so much to put in place. Iraq is particularly important because it sits on the largest oil reserve in the world according to new seismic data. And with so much uncertainty in the region because of the Arab Spring, Iraq remains a very strategic ally. So the 16,000 are split up like this. 2,000 diplomats and 14,000 civilian contractors. Half of those contractors are there for general life support, everything from transportation to food service at mess hall. And the other half are security contractors. I want to talk about the latter, security contractors, because you hear that term tossed around a lot, but I think a lot of people don't really know what it means. I did. The official name for the entity is Private Military Company, or PMC, though many know them as security contractors or even mercenaries, though they don't really like that last name. Maybe you can see why. Whatever you want to call them, they are corporations that deal in the peripheral duties of war for profit. They can't engage in offensive operations according to the Geneva Convention, though they can do almost everything but including defensive operations with a liberal use of the term defense. They build planes, maintain them, even fly them in conflict zones. They supply bodyguards for diplomats. They construct vast military camps, operate intelligence systems, supply weapons and ammunition, and they train soldiers. In fact, most security contractors are retired soldiers, men and women who come out of combat with a set of skills applicable nowhere else but in combat. Contract companies will pay them generously for those skills, often more than double what the army pays. It's no skin off their back because the private military industry has boomed in the last 10 years. Really ever since 1991, when the Pentagon, led by then Defense Secretary Dick Cheney, paid a company called Brown and Root Services $8.5 million to study the use of private military forces with soldiers in combat zones. Now, Brown and Root Services was a subsidiary of Halliburton, an oil company where Cheney served as CEO between his time as Defense Secretary and Vice President. His study found that outsourcing duties to private military companies was cheaper. So after 9-11, when the Bush administration announced its war on terror, the role of PMCs was increased dramatically. During combat operations in Iraq, tens of thousands of security contractors supplied necessary goods and services to the troops as they toppled Saddam's regime. And when the invasion ended and the occupation began, Again, contractors only grew in number. The government was outsourcing its responsibilities to the point of confusion. In April 2004, four contractors from a company called Blackwater were killed, burned, and dragged through the streets of Fallujah in central Iraq. This footage was released to the news outlets and it prompted a revenge mission to recapture the city. Operation Vigilante Resolve, in which 27 Americans were killed, 180 insurgents, and 600 
Iraqi civilians. You see, security contractors don't have access to all the tactical information that the troops have, yet still they carry guns and operate within all the same theaters of conflict. They don't fall into the chain of command so they can leave anytime they want. They get multi-million dollar contracts from the State Department, but being private companies, they don't have to provide itemized records of where the money is going. But perhaps the most troubling thing of all about PMCs is that they don't fall under the uniform code of military justice. It's that lack of accountability, that lack of oversight, which alarms many people. The questionable deaths of dozens of Iraqis which will never be prosecuted properly. As the war ends, the contractors will stay indefinitely to provide security for the embassies in Baghdad, Erbil, Kirkuk, and Basra. The last being a city 20 miles from the border of Iran and sitting on one of the largest oil fields in the world. Yes, oil. Sexy, delicious, scrumptious oil. If Iran seizes control of it in one way or another, we could see gas prices rise to five, six, seven, ten dollars a gallon. I think it's unfair to say that the only reason we went to Iraq was for the oil, but there's no doubt that in large part and with the help of PMCs, it's why we're staying. <laughs>